Across the Western world, there's been a consistent spike in deaths both inside and outside of hospitals in the first few days of January. So what actually might be behind this spike in deaths? Well, the first few days in January are not consistently cold enough for the weather to be a significant factor. Now, more deaths do occur in winter, but there isn't a reason why the first week in January should be more lethal than the last one. So this and other general direct environmental factors are unlikely to be the root cause of the problem. Instead, the cause is more likely to be sociological, immunological and psychological in nature. There may be factors which will change the statistics, but these are unlikely to contribute to the actual spike in deaths themselves. For instance, there is an increase in alcohol consumption. This generally has longer term effects. People may drive longer distances on roads that they're not used to driving on, meaning that there are more accidents per mile driven. However, there are actually fewer people on the roads in general than on a normal working day, since there are few people commuting to work. These statistics seem to show that alcohol accidents and even homicides are not behind the spike in mortality. One of the key things that does, though, happen before January is a great deal of food is consumed that is not normally eaten during the rest of the year. This means additional calories are consumed and then laid down as fat, which may put additional strains on the heart. In addition, food that is prepared isn't often cooked the rest of the year, so may not be heated to the correct temperature, leading to an increase in the cases of food poisoning. And we have a reaction to the overeating, with the decision at the start of January to get back into shape. Unfortunately, with some people overexerting themselves by trying to do too much, too quickly, all leading to heart attacks and similar medical emergencies. A more psychological reason behind the spikes in deaths may be related to the number of family visits during the holiday season. A number of critically ill people can extend their life for a few days or even longer if given sufficient motivation. This willpower or fighting for life is being long recognised in the medical profession as an important driver in deciding whether or not someone lives or dies. During this period, people with serious health problems will make an extra effort to see their grandchildren or even to see in their new year, extend their lives for a few extra days. However, once the new year's arrived and the grandchildren have gone back home, the motivation is reduced and relapses and deaths are more likely. Now, as well as food poisoning, there are some other medical considerations for the phenomenon. Firstly, again because of meeting people who've travelled significant distances, this may expose people to new strains of bacteria and viruses their immune systems find it difficult to cope with. Then people this time of year may have under significant stress, either socially or financially, or indeed both, which may lower their resistance to disease. In addition to this, medical centres which treat people over the period will likely be overworked and understaffed, especially in the area of specialists, so key symptoms of diseases may not be spotted as early as they would normally be. And this is combined with a reluctance on behalf of people to actually visit the medical facilities over the period, so as not to make such a fuss over a little thing, again can delay the start of the treatment by delaying the med visits to medical facilities themselves. Now, all of these factors combine to create the peak deaths that are seen at the start of the new year. Being aware of them possibly may mean that you're actually less likely to fall victim to the spike yourself.